What? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. And five. Four. Is that right? It's always fear. I'm trying to wait to see what you're going to say. Let's do it, buddy. Now we can. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the City Griffin Board of Commissioners, October 23rd. We'll begin by uh, the Pledge of Allegiance being led by Commissioner Brock, followed with by me leading the, the please, invocation. Please rise. Please rise and join me in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in prayer. Father, we're here today to ask for your blessing. We pray for love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us be presented. Help us to and keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you. Proclamation for Red Ribbon Week. We have Ms. Flowers with a motion, Mr. Tinsley with a second. A hand. Okay, welcome, sir. The first item is to consider proclamation declaring November 4, 2018 to be Retired Educators Day. Cynthia Reed Ward will present the proclamation. Is anybody here to join us for Retired Educators Proclamation? Please come forward. Okay, a proclamation commemorating Retired Educators Day. Whereas the governor of the state of Georgia has proclaimed Sunday, November 4th, 2018, as Retired Educators Day in Georgia. And whereas there are more than 123,000 retired educators in Georgia, more than 20 the retired educators of Georgia donate thousands of hours of volunteer service, their talents to the cause of public education and their efforts to provide academic development and invaluable contributions to the welfare of their respective communities across our state. Retired educators knowledge process in a myriad of ways, often as a major source of insight and direction and education for our community, our state, our nation, and whereas for 60 plus years, the Georgia's retired educators, it is appropriate that a day be designated for citizens to express their contributions that retired educators have made and continue to make for the betterment of human lives and for society. Whereas local churches, civic groups, governmental entities, and community leader, leadership to leave our society better. Now, therefore, the city of Griffin Board of Commissioners does hereby sincerely thank these retired educators, and it urges its citizens to pause and reflect on their many noble acts of service on our behalf and to observe Sunday, November 4th, 2018, in, a, in an appropriate manner to honor Retired Educators Day in the state. In witness whereof, I proclamation be spread upon the menace of this meeting of the Board of Commissioners, set my hand and cause the seal of the City of Griffin to be, be affixed to this proclamation, executed on this, the 23rd day of October, 2018. day of November 2018 in the city of Griffin shall be Retired Educators Day. Douglas S. Holbrook, Chairman, Kenny L. Smith, City Manager.
thank you ladies for being here tonight. My eighth year of teaching at Atkinson Road Elementary School and I have sympathy for teachers after the stories of her life and stuff that get shared to me. teacher growing up that made a difference in our life. Next item is to um, present a proclamation declaring November 2018 to be National Family Caregivers Month. Mr. Eddie Grogan and Ms. Susan Wilson Tucker will be here to, present, to receive this. Family Caregivers Month, whereas November is National Family Caregivers Month, a time to celebrate the contribution of the friends hours and support of loved ones with their health issues and or with their disabilities. And whereas the National Alliance of Caregiving and the Caregiver worked since 1994 with the administration of community presidential administration to recognize contributions to American society. The Family Caregiver oldest national family caregiving nonprofit in the United States to advocate for the support caregivers provide services, education, resources for caregivers. Whereas the mission of the Arch National Respite Network is to assist and promote the development of quality respite and crisis care to help in crisis care services to serve as a service but in all forms whereas with each year's giving around engaged educated the broad spectrum of family caregivers ranging from parents to children friends the young with a diagnosis of MS to adult children caregivers for aging and informed parents with and without dementia diagnosis. I want to recognize and honor that caregiving is an around the clock and sometimes long term responsibility with a host of inherent challenges and rewards. And whereas November is the appropriate time to pause and acknowledge not only the care provided, but the sacrifices made by this region of caregivers for their loved ones. to provide services, programs, care, and resources these caregivers and their loved ones. And whereas, knowing that caregivers who support loved ones with Alzheimer's or dementia face special challenges, Seattle Health Hospice had a drive to offer dementia caregivers conference in the Griffin on Tuesday, December 2018, called Hope for the Holidays, Dementia Giving conference featuring well known speaker Robert Bowles, who was diagnosed himself with Lewy body dementia at the age of 64. This time of year, while happy, conference will offer solutions, coping mechanisms, and best practices to facilitate Alzheimer's and dementia. And therefore, we, the commissioners of the city, hereby declare November 2018 to be. all citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of giving of themselves and our nation and some heroes in the have Griffin to a the year of our Lord 2018 signed Douglas S. Wilbur, Chairman Kenny City Manager and so I'll be there at your event coming up on Tuesday about that there's awesome. if you know there's that and awesome. I, I will be brief but uh, I just got new information from the governor's office today that there are 500 and about the members that are taking care of all inches in their home and uh, at eternal hope we have committed ourselves to giving back to the community 
to begin teaching our care, our community how to take in their home to keep appreciate it and the citizens of Griffin appreciate it. Thank you. We'll sit over here and get a picture right quick. in the Griffin Spalding County School System where we participated in different volunteer events during the Red Ribbon Week, 3rd through the 31st, aimed at discouraging underage drinking and drug abuse. Whereas alcohol and drug abuse affect individuals, families, communities, we launched to prevent drug abuse and demonstrate a commitment to healthy schools and media leaders. And whereas Red Ribbon Week offers citizens an opportunity to demonstrate their individual commitments to drug and now, therefore, the City of Griffin further commits its resources to ensure the success of the week. That's a lot. To recognize and uh, recognize the lasting contributions made here at the Leadership Council as they work toward making this year's theme a reality. Travel drug free. In witness thereof, I have hereunto directed this proclamation be spread upon the minutes of this meeting by the city uh, board of commissioners and have my hand. It's the 23rd day of 2018, declaring the week, declaring the week of uh, uh, the city of Griffin shall be proclamated to be Red Ribbon Week for the 23rd through the 31st. <laughs> Signed, Doug Holberg, Chairman, and Kenny Smith, Manager. Just say no, and uh, Red Ribbon Week has been one of those programs that has been in our school system for decades, and just want to strongly encourage all of our youth and young people to say no and to you know, be drug-free, alcohol-free, and grow up strong. Would you like to say anything? Want to say something? Y'all come in. Y'all come in and go. Just say Ribbon Saving. Say it five times real fast. <laughs> They're, they're playing very shy, but they have committed their their um, their lives to trying to make a difference in the community by giving back and by 
witnessing to their peers, others their age, that they can live a drug-free, alcohol-free life Amen. and be Amen. successful. So thank you. Thank you all so much. Next item is back on schedule is to recognize Ray News Truck and Equipment Company, Speedway Ford Commercial Division, Nutrion US Inc., Griffin Kennel Club, American Kennel Club, and Representative David Knight, State Representative for Donations for Police Department Canines. Police Chief Mike Yates and Patrolman Josh Jordan will address. Good evening, Chief. Thank you for uh, this couple of minutes to recognize these folks. Um, the dogs are excited. One of the um, ways that they train them when they're a puppy is by clapping. So when they hear the clapping, they like they think, oh, it's time to, to do our stuff. But um, the useful life of a police canine is generally somewhere around seven years. You might get a year plus or minus two. And uh, two of the dogs that we had were coming uh, close to retirement. And one had actually passed by a couple of years. If y'all recall, we actually retired him once and then brought them back out of retirement and whatnot. Well, they're very expensive animals and require a lot of training as do the handlers. Well, uh, Josh Jordan, uh, with the assistant of Representative Knight, went on a bit of a crusade to try to hit up everybody we thought would be supportive of the program to try to replace our, um, our canines. And to be honest with you, I expect, oh, we'll get two or three thousand dollars and we'll make up the rest of it with asset forfeiture money or budget money or whatever. But to my surprise, with the assistance of um, the different participants, we raised enough money to pay for both uh, K-9 Helmet and K-9 Buddy here, uh, plus cover the training cost of the officers to travel out of state. So Buddy's still kind of a pup, um, although he's big as a timber wolf. And um, so we just want to express our appreciation to these folks. And I do have a certificate of appreciation for each person that helped us with the fundraising activities. Um, and I'll read them out. And if some of our folks want to come forward, I know we have at least a few here, representatives from the different organizations. Do we have anybody here uh, from our news truck and equipment? How about... I know I got somebody here from the Griffin Kennel Club. Um, Speedway <coughs> Ford. It's been a bit of a challenge to get everybody in one place at one time. We've actually tried a couple of times before. And this is uh, Nutrien US uh, Inc. You got a hot dog in your pocket. Is that what that is? Um, and of course, the Griffin Kennel Club. Thank you. Sure. That's the least we could do. Uh, we have a certificate of appreciation for the American Kennel Club also. I don't think we have anybody here from that. And one for uh, Representative David Knight that helped us coordinate with AKC. So I just want to say thank you for helping us. And uh, these dogs will serve us well for several years. And uh, the guys have done a great job. And as you can see, in spite of being really excited to be in here, they're fairly well behaved, which is better than I can say for their two handlers most of the time. <laughs> so but anyway, thank you very much. And uh, I guess we want to get a photo made right quick. Have you got anything you want to say? Just Carrie, please. We appreciate everything that the officers do, law enforcement officers all across our county. Um, we were happy to donate to this. Wanted to let you know that the first state of emergency kits for the canines are on order and the Narcan trauma units are on order. Those will actually be shipped to the departments. But um, in conjunction with Forest Hill Subdivision and the fundraiser they had earlier this year, we raised enough to cover all the dogs in Spalding County that work in law enforcement. Thank you very much. And I just want to say one other thing to uh, Ms. Carey, the one that just addressed She has just been fundamental in helping us with everything that has to do with our says no. For us, to like she said, uh, Narcan kids for the canines and a number of different kids, um, stuff that we really use, snake bite kids. <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm going to 
appreciate it, guys. Great. So let's give a raindrop clap. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank y'all so much. Can the dogs be on opposite sides and behave? <laughs> let's see if we can calm, get them to behave a minute. Okay. Right here. Trying to get the dogs in? Yeah. Well, you too. Got to care. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come on Neil in front of y'all. Okay, please. All right, one more time. Hey. <laughs> Vicious animal, I think. I think they're. Yeah. Here we go. We're gonna just have to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is a great day. One of those that works with the citizens every day is we're going to recognize Serena Painter, customer service representative two with the Electric Customer Service Department as the September 2018 Strongest Link Award recipient. Dan Thompson, Electric Director, will be here to address. Welcome, Dan. Good to see everybody. Thanks for having us. As as my uh, my counterpart directors and and our both of our chiefs say, this is the best part of, of my job. And as we continue to strive for excellence in customer service, I am confident that we're making that. And I'm really pleased and proud to say that we built a new link. And I'm going to ask our customer service manager, Rita Bagwell, to come up here and read a narrative, and, and then we'll roast you. <laughs> and Rita, I did pass out your cards this morning with your new phone numbers. Thank so you. All got them. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I called earlier, and I got a report. <laughs> I screened them. <laughs> Just Truman, though, right? Just Truman. Just Truman. Just Truman. Good answer. <laughs> that um, one of our own in customer strongest link. Um, we love to support the to get this each month. We're excited for the one of our own gets it. Second of customer service. Um, great things are happening in customer service. Lena Panner has been with the city of Griffin's years. During her tenure in the customer service department, she's held the positions of cashier, phone reception, as a customer service representative, too. Serena provides excellent customer service to all of her customers. To train the new employees coming on board with the customer service team, cashiers, phone reps, customer service representatives. Serena has done this on top of Serena is a truly team player and can offer assistance to her teammates whenever they need help. She also offers assistance to other departments that pertain to customer service. I nominated Serena as the strongest link participant for her to go over and beyond her normal duties as well as the excellent customer service she provides to all of her customers. Um, the same day that I was notified that Serena had received this award, I received a letter due to some conflict interest with Tom and she could not, but she did give me permission to read some of the things she wrote in this letter that I wrote about her. The Spalding County water only customer. She had a leak in a pasture, which is not something that you would obviously see um, until you get that water bill in the mail, and she did. And she realized that she um, in her letter, she took the receipt to the Griffin Water Department, known as the department um, and she was instructed to wait with, to speak with the customer service representative Ms. Fred Panter. 
Having retired as a media relations specialist for the city of McDonough, I am aware that employees who deal with the public and those in positions above them only hear the negative, the griping and complaining about services and resulting actions that were not the answers they were seeking. I trust you will find this letter to be a breath of fresh air, and I did, a reason to smile and to express your appreciation to one of your employees who truly makes the term customer service, takes the term customer service to heart. She had not met Ms. Panter prior to visiting the water department. She took her seat, waited her turn. After a short wait, she was summoned with a friendly smile to her um, to Serena's office. The customer was extreme, extremely impressed with her patience, thoroughness, her willingness to research this matter and talk with me in such an open manner, laying the basis for a positive, comfortable, and trusting service relationship that was both amicable to me, the customer. Ms. Fred was also coming back with her on a particular date to further work on solving this matter. She did what could be done when all information was in her especially in customer service are in gold. And I'm going to repeat that. Outside employees, especially in customer worth, their weight in gold. In that reading, I deliberately substituted Fred. And in this book, it was written by Mark Sanborn, and he had a, a encounter with his postal service after he moved. He met his postman. His name was Fred, and he said, I see so I can better serve you that they determined that he traveled a lot and Fred was going to help him in that time of his time of being away how to get his mail safely rather than sitting on his doorstep. Belong on one doorstep and carry it for UPS to the right doorstep. Same thing for FedEx. I really talks really in this book about how excellent customer service. We've given department a copy of this book and I can assure you that Serena Panner did not need this book. She has already exemplified how to provide excellent service and we're blessed to have her on our team. We're thankful for her and we appreciate the honor to recognize her tonight and to be able to say just thank y'all for this. Serena, congratulations. I get to work with you on a weekly basis, and you are always first class. And um, we look forward to you continuing staying in customer service where a lot of those other employees go to other places. You're, you're stuck here. You Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you all. Okay. Where's her chain? Thank you. Her chain. It's on my desk. Oh, oh you forgot this. They did it differently. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Moving into citizens' comments. At this time, the chairperson opens the floor to comments from the audience. Comments should relate to a specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to the concern within the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of inducting city business and are not a forum for the unlimited expression of opinion. The chairperson reserves the right to limit comments to matters germane to city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or staff for resolution. With that being said, is there anybody on my left side like to come before the board? Anybody on my left side? If you could please give your name and address for the record. My name is Derek Parrott and I own A1 Automotive at 1246 West Taylor Street. Good evening, sir. Go ahead. Okay. You know, we, I've been up here a couple of times to stress how important it is for me to have you know usage of my parking lot. I have an old 
back in its original day was the Buick and Cadillac dealership. All right, it's a dealership. So the inside of it is, you know, a pretty big size building. The parking lot is even bigger. I have an 80 car parking lot and the new ordinance only allowed me to We're talking about equality, about how you pass rules and regulations. Y'all passed a rule and regulation on how many cars. But my building is an old dealership, so it's on a few doors. Clean up Griffin, I'm all about cleaning this. If y'all would my shop, I will walk y'all through the shop. Look, that needs to be cleaned up. It's clean today. Just that simple. You know, all my cars. Takes this place. I mean, this week. I mean, that's good business. But if I, it's like this. If you go to a restaurant and, you know, you're the customer and you look at the restaurant and you're like, dang. We can have those seats, but we can't use them because the city's got it or the county's got it where we can have them, but we can't use them. Y'all just going to have to wait until we have seats we can use. That customer's like, what? They're going to leave, and they might not come back. I've already had to turn away a few customers already just this week, and by calling them back, they're like, oh, well, we already got it fixed somewhere else. Thank you, though. I mean, you know, when we drop a car, you know, if you got the spot to, you know, keep that car there, plus I've got three cars right now that I'm waiting on parts. And, you know, this best thing is national back order. You call Chrysler for just about any part that you need from Chrysler, oh, it's on national back order. You know what that means? Whenever they get the part, you'll get the part. I mean, it's just that simple. I got Dodge Dakota. I'm, I, this guy said it for four weeks waiting on a computer from uh, California. I can't call the customer, but, like, hey, look, while I'm waiting on your car, you come tow it to your house, and then, you know, when it comes in, you, you can tow it back up here. I mean, you know, we got to be sympathetic. I've and I ain't never had any problem with the city of Griffin, ever. Not one complaint, not one ticket, no nothing. And then all of a sudden, just boom, I get a ticket for 47 cars. I mean, we're, you know, a couple of shops. We're having to turn away work. It's been sitting there a long time. Tires, missing body parts. I'm a mechanic shop. That's it. That's the only person that's and then towed back the next morning. And, of course, if you've got a shop that, you know, allows people to drop their cars after hours, you're going to get it, going to get it towed there. And then we have the issue of putting all the cars in the building. I mean, we can do that. But I, uh, I don't know, a Chevrolet Corsica up on top of the rack, and I pulled your BMW on there, up under that car, and it has oil leak on that place that's been there. I mean, I've had it painted. I had a wall that's in the front of it because it looked like crap, replaced. It was 7500 bucks out of my own pocket. It's just because it looked bad. It wasn't broken or nothing. It just looked like poo. I mean, you know, everything is based on looks. If your business looks like crap, you're not going to get in a very good business. If your business looks good, representable, people will stop by. People will use you. And if you have an empty parking lot, people are going to be like, man, that guy probably ain't doing something right because he ain't got cars in his parking lot. A lot of people don't stop by. Oh, ain't nobody there. Oh, man, ain't nobody there. So, I mean, you know, that's all we're asking for. Derek, I don't mean to cut you off. Okay, I appreciate I understand. you coming by. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You can please give your name and address. <laughs> please, sir. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Amy Farrow, and uh, I run Neil's Transmission Service here in Griffin, Georgia. It's 480 Drive. And uh, I'd like to talk with them, just uh, make a couple of statements yes, about the car oh, counts. A new car. Uh, we have some cars that sit for days for just the people to decide. Do they have the money to fix transmissive? Um, but we, the people have not come and paid us and picked the car up. Um, 
So on average, a transmission job is about 16 hours of work on one repair, on a rebuild. So when customers call us and say, you know, everybody thinks their transmission's bad, and you know, a lot of times they're not, so that's why we have to get them there to check them over. Um, you know, some of them have electrical problems that are complicated. We take some time to, for us to check them over and pinpoint the problems. But, um, you know, we at Neil's Transmission have, we have told people, you know, we have been so busy that, you know, we've told people, said, you know, I'm sorry, but you can't tow your because, you know, there's a new ordinance and we're afraid we're going to be fined as a business for your car being on our property because we can't get to it yet. So we've turned, you know, said, give me two or three days. Um, we'll schedule you an appointment on this that day. And what happens is in line now. And so if we can't take it in, they take it somewhere else. So we have missed. So, you know, and I'm just saying over two or three days, you know, there. Um, we do a lot of work for a lot of other shops in town. Um, you know, some shops, they are total car care, but they are not. How can I say it? They're not transmission guys, and we are. So they may put in a reman transmission and not work properly, and then they have to bring it to us. And so we do also, they do subcontracting, where they'll take in the vehicles that need transmissions. We'll do the work for them, and they, you know, supply that service to the customer. So, but it, it has, our numbers have been down, because, you know, if we have 10 or 15 cars brought in, you know, they don't need transmission work. Well, if those people are dragging, when somebody says, I'm on side, will not move, we have a transmission rebuild. And it has affected us. It has because we've tried to stay, you know, in, you know, stay below the four outside. Um, and another thing that's kind of funny is we won the best auto mechanics in Griffin. On the and business has really, I mean, since that business has really, really went up. And it's, it's a shame that we've had know done better for our business because of that so I, mean, I feel like it it does need to be a another type of decision to say how many cars can be outside and, and in toward the hedges or you know sometimes on the building they're, they're neat and orderly you know so and that's it thank you Jamie. appreciate it all right thank y'all thank you yes sir name and address for the record please good evening my name is Chris Small 605 West Taylor here in town uh, we're in a specialized business and most of everything that we work on is a work in progress uh, it's hard to come in and leave within a week you know so that's an accumulative of cars that are not working us trying to sort through issues that other people can't because proprietary stuff through Mercedes and BMW so we can't just snap our fingers and make this stuff happen we got to order our download stuff on the internet and stuff so um, it's, I wish I was in more of a, a streamlined business, but this is what we're doing. Um, you know, just try to be one of those uh, unforeseen uh, factors uh, month to month, day to day, as to what comes in and what gets picked up. Um, that's why one of the things I was very shocked about was the car count suggestion that came up before this thing was put into uh, an ordinance or law or whatever it is. Uh, it was it was suggested and you know express our that's that's not gonna work. We got to this point. Uh, this modification stage that we're in uh, my mind I mean, I, in my mind, there's enough paper to fill up this room. And so with that in mind, I'm just like, how do we need to add anything to that when we can just, the code enforcement people can, you know, at their discretion, leverage anything that's on their books individually, case by case, just be fair about it other than just everything being absolute. There's nothing absolute. The only thing that absolute is there's nothing absolute. Uh, so everything's a moving target with us. 
I wish we could get them in, get them out. The fair amount of cars that we had accumulated, we ultimately used and stuff like that. Uh, we tried to keep everything nice and neat and, uh, you know, leaks off the ground and stuff so we wouldn't be doing any environmental issues and stuff. Uh, you know, just try to do the best we can and at the same time, you know, yield to any uh, city, uh, uh, you know, parameters, you know, on sidewalks and this sort of thing. You know, my lot will hold about 60 cars. In my mind, you know, we signed up, we bought a business license, we partnered up with Griffin to under anything that we can get our hands on to make money in that industry. Uh, and formulating how many cars for how many doors and stuff like that. I just, you know, I just, and then it was also suggested this morning that that this law and, and uh, ordinance went into effect with everybody in town that it would affect, you know, sitting there closed mouth and everything else. And now that when it was passed and then enforced, now everybody's jumping up and down. That's not true. I mean, what we're saying tonight is what we said then, before it was, uh, into, you know, before it was voted and put into uh, law and stuff. So, uh, so that, and, and I remember the last one of the last meetings we came to. Uh, I called the formula. Cause that's what everybody's trying to get to situation. And once again, let me remind you that you guys have so much at your disposal already to come out and say. Do something with this car, you know. Do something with whatever this is. You know. Do something with it. I'm going to check back in a week. And it's, you know, like I said, some formula had to come up, and now we're down to a car count. <laughs> I just, we're specialized. We can only have any cars on the line. Uh, I mean, if you would have came out and spent a day with me or a week with me and actually seen the problem, when that formula Somebody I said, hey, you know what? I spent time over there. I just don't see how it's going to work for him. And maybe anybody else. Uh, so, you know, my thing is, you know, getting back to beautifying the city, I'm all about that. Uh, I'm all about fixing cars, right? That's what I've spent my life doing. Uh, you know, we need to do to uh, perfect our profession that we have chosen to take. And at the same time, I want to look good doing it. We're in a but doing the best we can. Uh, but at the same time, one of my last for somebody to be knocking on my door over there saying, you, you know, your arms on the I just don't even know how. To, uh, so that that's it in a nutshell. I mean, am I? And you know, I know this sounds crazy to. But I just say we just do away with that. Go back to what you already had on the books, and uh, and go to work. You know, go out and just you know just individually. I mean, I don't know how many code enforcement people you got, but you know, over time this this, this can happen. And somebody pointed out this morning that a lot of work's been done, and a lot of uh, progress has been made. That has, and even in my place, this cost me a lot of money. I'm not mad about it. Uh, you know, in some in some vehicles, uh, sure. You know, if if there's a, a part that we might only use, if we got three, say, differentials or something like that, we've used two in the last five years. We got ten years supply. Ultimately, to make those decisions on my own, and at the same time, try to keep our town looking respectable. That, that that's. I mean, I, just, I can't think of sense to me. Uh, find the town service does make clean to me so but that's all I have to say guys thank you Mr. Paul Griffin Georgia I saw this today I actually own the shop But Cobb's out of repair. Uh, I'd take them in and I'll build them. But if they take them in and they know that them for three days, they're not going to take them in anymore. So therefore, it don't just hurt them businesses. It hurts people down the line also. It hurts employees. That's automotive, prime example. I mean, he's got 12 employees. Y'all cut him cars, there's no doubt in my mind he'll cut five employees. 
dollars out there. I spent sixteen eight dollars a month with O'Reilly's. Cut his business down, guess what? O'Reilly's is going to lose money. And there's a lot of people's really cleaned their lots up. Just today, after this morning, I went around and looked. A lot of them's cleaned it up. But, I mean, just, you know, before you make the big decision, think about, you know, the smaller people, too, that's going to lose in the end. But I know I have. I mean, I know by my banking account, I know I've lost from it. Right. Thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Is there anybody else on my left like to come before the board? Anybody else on my left? Is there anybody on my right? Moving into public hearings. Public hearings are conducted to allow public comments on specific advertised issues such as rezoning, ordinances, policy development, operating budgets, and other legislative actions to be considered by the City Commission. First item tonight is received comments regarding a request for a special use permit to allow for a places of assembly to utilize a structure located at 109 East Taylor Street as a multi-use activity center. <coughs> Director of Planning and Development, Tucson Kirk, will address. Good evening, sir. So 109 East Taylor Street is actually the uh, old Blue Goose, uh, located directly behind the uh, Tiger Lily. Um, the use uh, would be a multi-purpose center, uh, dancing, uh, in operation um, during the day and on the weekend, Monday through Friday and on the weekend. Type space if you need somewhere to meet someone to have a, a fish. So that service would be available. Uh, and on Sundays from 9 to 2, uh, they would have a uh, worship service in the event slash conference area of the. Uh, it's located on the map that you guys have in your in your portfolio there. Uh, parking will be used. Uh, the parking that would be used is parking. Um, again, it's a business during the day. Or during the week, and you would have a kind of two. So the board, the uh, planning board, did recommend approval, and staff has recommended approval of the request as well. Any conditions? Uh, assembly requires like two other things. I think it is. Can't remember. Once the uh, upon vacating this location for its principal site, the right. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, Josh Abney, think, I think he's here tonight. Um, parking deck for the city? Mm hmm So right Can now... Can use that parking deck? Correct. So right now they have a dance class that's there that's been in operation for probably a year, year and a half. Not to the extent that you have during the week. So how does the library... Sure. I'm asking you how did the city's liability work with such that situation? Is there a liability, Mr. Williams? Is there a liability? Well, we have insurance. Yeah. Right. But it is, a is it done, done right? Is it really? Mm -hmm. So you park on the street, park, park in. Yeah, park on the street. I mean, it, like I said, it's a The county. We're not in the county. Uh, yes. Is there a back entrance? There is. Access from the parking deck. There is. Yes, sir. Does the board have any other questions? This is a public hearing. So, the last six years, we've done approximately 20 rezonings. Um, the rezonings already have been passed, and you guys have already voted on them. We're just really just updating the map to match what the uh, new zonings are. Um, it's really a formality that needs to be done, so we can create new maps and uh, also put those on the website. Okay. Um, so these are basically the, the upgrades, but this isn't, you're not doing any block rezoning or anything? No, no, no. These are just making the changes? Correct. The changes that have already been made, now we just need to represent them on a map. Are there any questions of board members? Again, this is a public hearing. Would anybody like to come before the board for comments or questions? Very good. Thank you very much, sir. We have a consent agenda. Consider minutes of the City Ribbon Board of Commissioners October 9th, 2018. I didn't look and see who was or wasn't here. Was everybody missing? Me. Okay. So Ms. Ward was missing. So do we have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Motion. with a second request for a special use permit to allow the assembly 
to utilize this structure located at one of the multi purpose activity center. Make a motion to approve. Discussion. All in favor of the rezoning? Six one with Mr. Brock voting against. An adjustments in that will go back to DCA. Was there anything that DC anybody any big complaints or anything? Or no big complaints, just a few minor uh, uh, additions to make it more palatable, I guess. Yep. Do we have a motion to approve the cop plan? Ms. Ward with a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Tinsley with a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signal by raise your hand. 7 0. A lease amendment for the Beck, Owens, and Murray lease to include the addition of permanent fixtures to the amount of $30,920 in suite 114 and amend the budget accordingly. Chief of Staff, Staff Jessica O'Connor will address. Good evening. permanent fixtures of shelving and um, to that to suite 114 so they will be paying that back to us um, in rent for this fiscal year. I have a motion to approve. I have a question. Yes sir. Go ahead. Uh, this is $30,900. This is going to be returned to the city within one year? By right. June 30th of next year so within this fiscal year. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve? I have a motion. Mrs. Second. Second. <laughs> questions or comments? All in favor, signal by raise. Okay, remember uh, Ms. Watson has the mayor's day agenda. Classes fill up quick. that out to you in an email the last few days, so if we'll get with her. From South Georgia, I think. The last couple of days, I thought Dan was here. I think they came back, I don't know, within the last couple of days, but for over a week, helping uh, some of the South Georgia cities that got hit real hard by Hurricane Michael. So we appreciate those guys' hard work, and I've received emails from those cities uh, relaying their appreciation for us being there to assist. I hope you heard about or you participated in the Great Griffin cleanup weekend before last uh, where city employees actually went out and picked up trash on Friday. We had our stream cleanup on Saturday and we hope that communities joined together that weekend to also clean up. I'm real proud of our city employees who <coughs> took the initiative to go out that Friday and actually pick up trash on the side of the road to make our town look better. I have a list of dates that I want you to keep in mind. Tomorrow is GMA District 4 Fall Policy Committee uh, meeting in Noonan from 11.30 to 1. Uh, of interest to you also on Thursday morning, uh, morning at o'clock. Our downtown trick-or-treat is coming up on the downtown from 4 to 6. I've had some questions about Southern Crescent Technical College uh, training complex there at Ellis Crossings, the old Walmart location. They're actually going to have an open house there. It's not until the end of November. It's Thursday, November the 29th, uh, and I believe that's where Dr. Thomas will also give the Southern Crescent, so you'll want to put that on your calendar and also see the Film Academy and the training complex there. Uh, November the 1st, Southern Crescent Workforce Development Alliance in conjunction with Central Georgia Development Alliance holds the Skills Challenge at uh, the Kiwanis Fairground. Thirty. Uh, that's really something to see if you do bricklaying and tree and a lot of those young people actually uh, complete those trades is something that morning that's first at 8 30. Uh, Veterans Day is coming up November the 12th. City offices will be closed that day in observance of Veterans Day. And just one last thing. 
I had the opportunity to be in Houston, Texas this weekend on Sunday when our own city attorney Drew Whalen was sworn in as president of the International Municipal Lawyers Association. Drew has been our city attorney for 30, 36 years. Right. He was president of the Bar Association here in Griffin in 1982. He's been in various capacities with the State Bar Association. If you recall, he was inducted into the GMA Hall of Fame in 2011, I believe. He's been a, a member of EMLA since around 1990. Nobody's old enough to really document that, but we think that's when he joined. He's been in various capacities with the board of directors of EMLA since 20, uh, since 2007, and he was recognized by EMLA in 2012 for his longevity of service to one single community, being Griffin. So I was very proud to be able to be there and witness his swearing in as pres presidency. I hope our media will uh, maybe do a special piece on Drew and what he means not only to his profession but to this community as well. And I just wanted to congratulate Drew. Good Thank you, Kenny. I appreciate Kenny and Jessica being there with me in Houston this past week. <clears throat> And y'all, mark your calendars for the middle of September next year. Okay. IMLA is going to be in Atlanta holding its 84th annual conference. And we plan to have y'all come join us. Will your speech be as long as the one this morning? <laughs> <laughs> is there a question or is it going to be five minutes? <laughs> That's a long speech. <laughs> <laughs> so Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. McCord. Uh, I want some, to piggyback off of Mr. Uh, Smith. <clears throat> I had an opportunity, well, the cleanup went well. I had my partner in crime, Jessica Choppy O'Connor, to make me do all the work while she held the bag. But November 1st, I believe. November 1st, I had an opportunity to go out there last minute notice. Um, I'm going as I can to attend this event. Uh, the, the coolest thing about it is to go out and participate um, climbing and within, you know, years, 18 years of age who possibly may not be able to play sports or get into the finest of colleges will have an opportunity to make a living um, actually doing some we're doing some faces so so that's all I have for tonight well thank you all for coming and for you all who took the time out of your busy schedules to to come and bring your issues back before the board um, I want you to know just on my behalf I, I hear you and um, we'll be going back having this conference you have to beat away and chip away at it but um, and, but um, and here again it's your town and so thanks and uh, good to have you Josh and the new place of worship I'm excited about that he's a good fellow we serve on DDA together um, another announcement which this is not city affiliated but the black cat hunt I just want to reiterate for everyone that's in the town please be careful that night every year I see some really close encounters and I have nightmares when I go to bed and uh, just just know that there is it's it's Tony's fault yeah it's Tony's fault it's gonna be rainy maybe sort of but kids everywhere and just you know if you're not gonna play just stay off the road maybe the that's attorneys what are announce. everywhere I hear too they're out there looking for that's right. Good that's chances, right. Uh, but it'll be fun. I, I'll, I plan to win, and I'm going to find a prize this time. <laughs> <laughs> but Cor thank you, everyone. Ms. Cora. Mr. Brock. No comment, sir. Mr. Tinsley. Uh, not city-related, but I was uh, quite taken back today. I took the opportunity to go vote early. All right. Yes, sir. And when I got there, there was about... Your name wasn't on the ballot, but oh. I voted for you. I was right in. But anyhow, there was about 50 people in line down uh, down at the uh, registrar's office to vote, and I was quite impressed. And I happened to see a gentleman that was on the Citizen Government Academy last year, Mr. Eason. 
and he's a pole official, and I happened to ask him, I said, how are we doing? He said, Truman, we have had between 900 and 1,000 people every day. So if you haven't taken the opportunity to vote, get you a bottle of water, go out there, wait in line, and vote, exercise your, your voting uh, rights. So. They're averaging 800 a day was the, the average. That's yeah. the average, but they have had 1,000 on one day. That's awesome. <laughs> Ms. Ward. No comment. I just want to um, thank folks here, automotive folks coming out and talking. We appreciate your concerns and we'll keep looking at them. Also, uh, down at Council, had a lot going on this past year with the concert series. We just had the feast on East and um, great things are happening. Again, Kenny mentioned the downtown trick-or-treating from 4 to 6. But I want to give a shout out to Josh and City Church. Um, they have been these ambassadors of health and hands and doing everything. And uh, you know, If we had all of our religious congregations working as hard as they are to try to make a difference in things. Uh, I think Ms. Ward with a second. All in favor, please rise.